Welcome back, my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube, to this weekly mobile gaming recap that includes a story-driven RPG, a 2D and 3D puzzler in one game, a massive fantasy survival game, and then a secret surprise game at the end of the video. I'm also thinking about launching a reaction-based video series later this year so we can laugh at all the horrible mobile game ads out there or just other stuff like that. So head down to the comment section and let me know if that's something you'd be interested in or if you have other ideas and I'll see what I can do about that. But to kick off this video, let me just tell you about today's first game, Slash of Sword 2, which is a story-driven adventure RPG fighting game with an open world full of NPCs, quests, and sword fighting duels. During a fight in this game, we use attack, block, and kick buttons the latter of which can be double tapped to perform a jump roll perfect for getting out of tough situations. Both attacking and defending costs stamina, which recovers over time and it forces us to mix offensive and defensive play. Every match also permanently decreases our total stamina, which we can increase again after the fight is over by consuming food and potions that also recover any lost HP. By completing these fights and the many quests in the game, we earn gold used to unlock new skills and buy better equipment and different types of melee weapons. Gold is a rather scarce resource in this game, but if the campaign becomes too difficult, we can play training matches that also reward us gold that we can use in the campaign mode. Now the world itself can be slightly confusing to navigate, but it features a nice atmospheric art style and well-made low-poly 3D models. The main drawbacks are that the left side joystick can take a bit to get used to and that once the campaign has been completed, there really isn't much else to do in the game. Thankfully though, a multiplayer game mode is in the works according to the developer. The game monetizes by showing advertisements between fights, which can be removed through a $2.99 in-app purchase and then the there are also a few incentivized advertisements and in-app purchases for potions to revive and for gear that lets us progress faster. Slash of Sword 2 can be played offline, it takes up 413 megabytes of space and it provides a fun RPG fighting experience with a solid combat system that is definitely worth checking out for fans of RPGs and fighting games. Now this next game is actually a bit of a hidden gem of a mobile game and when I say it's developed by Nitrome, I know that quite a few of you are already getting very excited because they make some absolutely fantastic games. And the name of the game is Flatpak and it's this level-based platform puzzle game that makes this 2D and 3D to create a fun and unique gameplay experience. Now to be a bit more precise, what that actually means is that every level in this game is made up of a 3D block full of 2D platforms that our character can walk on. To navigate the block, we simply swipe left or right to move and then tap to jump, which we can do continuously to essentially fly upwards. But this is where it starts to get interesting though, because if we move across one of the edges of the block, it will rotate so we can continue moving on the other sides. And our goal is to collect all three stars that are scattered throughout the block in how to get places and then reach the exit without dying from obstacles and the many enemies. One of the most impressive aspects of Flatpak is that all 30 levels feel completely unique, which forces us to constantly adapt to new enemies and obstacles, which keeps the game fresh and entertaining. But maybe even the best part about this game is that the monetization is so dead simple. We're shown occasional advertisements between levels and then we can remove those through a single free 99 in-app purchase. You can play it offline as well, it only takes up 95 megabytes of space and it's an easy recommendation for any one fed up with the standard action platformer formula. Now before we get to the awesome surprise game that I mentioned in the intro, I want to talk a bit about Grim Soul because this is an incredibly popular fantasy themed survival game by the last day on earth developer Kefir and I just don't get it. The game essentially has us travel to randomly generated areas to fight monsters and collect resources used to craft new items, improve our home and then slowly level up to unlock new RPG style abilities. And frankly that sounds like a great premise for a mobile game but traveling often takes over 20 minutes unless we spend energy that recovers very slowly over time, so that means we're very limited in how much we can travel without paying and this contributes to making the game extremely grindy. The game also deliberately tricks us into thinking we meet and fight other players from time to time, but these are all just AI NPCs with look-alike player names and the only actual online element are the guild-based co-op rates. But hey, let's say we can live with that, we forgive the developer, but then what about the monetization? Well, the game monetizes through in-app purchases for gear, equipment, resources and run energy and while it's easy to get hooked on its fun core gameplay loop, there is no denying that this monetization makes the game incredibly pay to win. You need to be online to play the game, it takes up 267 megabytes of space, and you know what the biggest crime here is? With a few tweaks, this game could have been absolutely fantastic, so it's truly, truly just a wasted opportunity. But I don't want to leave you guys without free actual good games this week, so here's a recommendation of a game that was covered over on Mini Review last week called Does Not Commute, and this is an awesome time-bending driving game 
game where we tap left and right to direct a car to its destination somewhere in this little 1970s town that the game takes place in. Now as soon as we've reached the goal with one car, we're then taken back in time to control a new car and the interesting twist here is that all the cars we've ever controlled move around town at the same time, which quickly makes it super difficult to avoid hitting our past selves. And as for the monetization of this game, there's just a single $2.99 in our purchase and no ads whatsoever, so it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't played it before. Now my favorite game this week has got to be Flatpak, which I think is actually a bit of a hidden gem of a casual mobile game, but let me know in the comment section down below if you disagree or agree with my opinion or which game you thought was the very best of this week. I also want to give a huge thank you to my loyal Patreon supporters who helped make this show possible, and if you're also interested in supporting these videos and the development of Mini Review, then head down to the Patreon link in the description box. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching, that is still absolutely the best way to support this lovely community we've got here on the channel, so until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around. Last day on Earth developed for Cave. <clears throat> developer. Last day on Earth developed for Cave. Developer. Developer. Gold is a rather ras, a rather ras, a rather scarce resource. Wow. And a surprise secret. <laughs> I. Ah, I fucked up. I fucked up.